Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And if you have an Apple Watch, you are going to love this video. We are showcasing our top eight surprising Apple Watch features that will make your life way easier. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump in. First up at number one is one that I use every single day, multiple times per day. It is covering the display of your Apple Watch with your palm in order to do certain things. The first thing it can do is simply dim your watch face. So if you raise your watch and you brighten the screen and then you wanna turn the display off or go back to the always on display, all you have to do is cover the display with your palm as you can see there. It can also return you to the watch face if you are browsing through all of your applications. So here, if I go to my home screen and I'm looking at my applications, if I wanna go right back to the clock, all I have to do is simply slap the screen and it brings me right back to the watch face. And this will also work system-wide for silencing any alerts or phone calls on your watch. So if you get a phone call and you wanna silence it, all you have to do is cover the display with your palm. It can also work with timers and alarms as well. So for an example, I'll open up my timer right here and I'll start one for four seconds. And as the timer goes off, you're gonna see if I cover the display with my palm, I'm able to get the timer to silence just like that. So this is a very handy gesture, and I think probably the number one use case for me is when I wake up in the morning and my alarm goes off on my watch, I find it very satisfying to simply slap the screen of my Apple Watch to get the alarm to shut off. Next up at number two is for Control Center. Control Center is very useful on the Apple Watch, but many people don't know that you can actually edit your Control Center. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see that there is an edit button. And if you click this, you can see all of your toggles go into an edit mode. Now there are two things that you can do when you're editing Control Center. You can change the arrangement of all these toggles and you can also remove certain toggles. So say for example, you access theater mode all the time. It may be quite annoying every single time you go into control center to swipe up and then scroll in order to find theater mode. So what we can do is click on edit and we can pick up theater mode and we can bring it all the way to the top. Alongside this, if there are some toggles that we don't use all the time, we can simply remove them right from Control Center. So this makes it super useful if there is a toggle that you use every single day in Control Center, you no longer have to scroll to access it. You can simply change the arrangement of Control Center on your watch. Next up at number three, this one is also for Control Center and also for your notifications. You can actually access any of these pages anywhere through watchOS. Many people don't know that you can do this. When you're in a different application, so we'll pick weather for example, if you try to swipe, you're gonna notice you cannot access your control center or your notifications. To access this, all you have to do is press and hold on either end of the display. So if I wanna access my control center, all I have to do is press and hold on the bottom edge of the screen, and from here I can access control center. The same goes for notifications. If I wanna see my notification center, all I have to do is press and hold on the top of the screen and then pull down from there. Next up at number four is changing what's called your return to clock settings. Now I'll jump right into settings on my watch to show you exactly what I mean. If you click on general and then scroll down, choose return to clock. Now this setting that you see right here is going to change your settings system wide. So whenever you open an application and then you put your watch down by your side, this setting that you choose here is going to determine how long it takes for your watch to return you back to the watch face. Now for me, I like two minutes. I think it's a perfect setting, but there are a few different applications where I would like the application to stay open. And if you scroll, you're able to customize this. So for me, the one application that I want to stay open longer than two minutes is music. So if I find music on this list, you can see I'm able to choose custom. And then for music, I want it to stay open for at least an hour because when I'm listening to music on my watch, my sessions are usually a bit longer than two minutes typically. So if I have music open, I don't want it to instantly return me to my watch face. I wanna be able to raise my wrist and see my music again. So this comes in really handy. I'm still able to have the default setting for all other applications set at two minutes, but for music, if I leave it open, it's always going to return to music for one hour. Next up is customizing the dock on your Apple Watch. You can access the dock on your watch simply by pressing the side button. And every Apple Watch has this, it lives right below the digital crown. 
when you press this, it's going to, by default, launch you into your most recent applications. However, this can be confusing for some people because every time they press it, this list of applications may change. And I think there is a setting that's built into the watch app on your iPhone that can make this button a lot more useful. So if you grab your iPhone and then open up the watch app, you can see we have a section right here that says dock. And if you change this from recents to favorites, you're able to have the exact same list of applications always available in the dock on your watch. So you can see here we have activity, heart rate, workout. These are just the defaults that the system sets up. And of course you can hit edit and you can change whichever applications you want to be in the dock on your Apple Watch. But now that I have this set up, you can see when I click the dock on my Apple Watch, all of those applications are there and they are never going to change. So you can essentially use this side button as its own app launcher in order to open applications that you use all the time. Next up is a tip for the newest Apple Watch models that have the new full screen keyboard. Some people are a fan of this, but personally, I really don't like it. I find that the swipe to text is pretty unreliable, and if you have big fat fingers like I do, it can be pretty hard when you're trying to poke at this keyboard in order to type. Many people are annoyed at this, and they think that Apple has just completely replaced the method of inputting text on these new Apple Watches. But you can actually go back to the old scribble method of inputting text on your Apple Watch. If you swipe up on your keyboard, you're able to change your input method. So if I change it to scribble right here, this is so much easier for me. So if I put in a word like uh, Starbucks here, you can see it makes it so much faster to type and I don't have to poke at the keyboard as I did before. And I should also mention that once you change your method of inputting text on your Apple Watch, it is going to change the default method system-wide. So once you change it to Scribble, it is always going to open in Scribble whenever you input text on your watch. The next one is a twofer. I have two little tips and tricks for two default applications on your watch, weather and calculator. Let's go ahead and start with weather. This one is pretty small, but many people don't know that you can do this on the watch. When you are viewing your forecast for any city, if you tap in the middle section of the weather forecast, you're able to actually see more information. So if I tap on this, I'm able to change it from temperature to conditions. And if I tap again, I'm able to see the rain as well. So this is just one of those very small hidden features in the weather app that makes using it a little bit nicer. And the next one, like I said, is for the calculator. The calculator app on your watch has a built-in tip mode. Now, many people don't understand how to use this because the tip button is grayed out. And if you tap on it, it doesn't do anything by default. So what you have to do is in the calculator, you have to input the total price of the bill and then tap on tip. So let's say for example, our bill was $82.36. Then we can tap on tip. And from here, we're able to choose what percentage we want to tip. And also if we are splitting the bill with anybody. So let's up our tip to a 22% tip. And let's say we are splitting it between three people. It'll show the total bill and also how much each person has to pay. This comes in very handy when you are out at a restaurant. And the final tip is for the timers application. If you find yourself always setting the exact same timer, there is a way on the watch to set your favorite timers and keep them at the top of the application. If I wanna set a four hour timer and always have that available to me, all I have to do is set a four hour timer like this one time. And as soon as I start it, I can even cancel it if I want to. It's going to show up in my recents. And then from here, all I have to do is swipe on that timer. And you can see that there is an icon. I can click on the star. And just like that, it's going to add that four hour timer into my favorites. This makes it so handy if you always have the exact same timer that you're setting every single day. And I have just a few bonus tips here at the very end. I know a bunch of you in the comments are going to ask how I get my apps in this alphabetical view. All you have to do is open up settings, scroll down and then choose app view. And the default on the watch is set to grid. Many of you are probably used to seeing this, but if you don't like this UI, you can simply change it to a list view and all of the apps on your watch are going to be listed alphabetically right here. And one more tip I can give you, if you are a fan of the grid view for your applications, but you want this in a slightly different style, there is a setting you can change in accessibility settings. So go back into settings and then choose accessibility and then scroll down a little bit and you wanna look for reduce motion right here. 
When you turn this on, it's going to remove most of the animations from your watch, and this is going to make your watch feel a lot faster. And you can also see that your app view is now a lot more flat, and some people find that this is a little bit easier to use. So that's gonna do it for this video. I want you guys to head into the comments right now and tell me what your favorite tip was I shared with you in this video. Also, let me know what version of Apple Watch you are rocking on your wrist every single day. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Michael with IDB. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.